We are Brit and Mike, and this is our dog, Leah. We're converting our 2021 Ford Transit van into a home on wheels. In this week's video, we're finishing up our floor with the addition of vinyl planks and painting our walls. It would us. be really funny if you could see from a distance <laughs> me standing like this so I can be in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone! Hi guys! Welcome back to our man build series. On episode 18, we are starting our flooring. Well, we're finishing our flooring. <laughs> so yeah. we've spent the past few weeks and months, we did a mini cell foam subfloor, and then we did a plywood subfloor on top of that. We just put in our heated floor pad mat. Yeah, it's an uh, underlayment and, yeah. and the heated floor system. So we did that last week and today we are starting on our vinyl planks. <laughs> yeah, so we went with luxury vinyl planks for a few reasons. One, they're waterproof, so that'll be huge. Uh, two, they're good in different temperature ranges. I don't have to wait for the planks to acclimate or anything like that before I install them. And uh, they look nice. I think durability is going to be great. Yeah. This is the color that we picked. <laughs> we uh, don't really have like a consistent wood color throughout the van, but I wanted to keep it all, all like neutral to cool tones. So it looks a little lighter in the sun, but this is the color. And how much was it at Lowe's? Uh, it was $64 a case and we needed five cases. $340 and tax. And then also I got a little kit to help install. This should have basically everything that we need to uh, to finish installing this guy. Okay, so there's really no perfect place to start <laughs> doing this in the van. There's no like nice straight flat walls that you know are free of any kind of obstacles. So I'm starting right here in the bench area. It's pretty flat for the most part, but I do have to notch out around this uh, pillar right here behind the driver's seat. So I went ahead and marked that out, kind of eyeballed it, marked it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the, uh, the jigsaw. I'm gonna take the jigsaw to it and notch it out and test fit it and see how we're doing. That'll just give me a starting point and then I can work off of that both out and back. We're gonna stagger our boards and so it'll have that you know, nice staggered look to it. sticking up here all right one down how many to go uh <laughs> a lot <laughs> all right guys so we got the first one in place and my plan now is to work back along the driver's side of the van and that way i can work around the wheel well and the pillar and you know all the curvature and stuff like that and then hopefully make it easier on myself working as i come this way so the whole middle should be relatively simple and then it's going to be more complicated once I get to the passenger side wall. That's the plan. Hopefully it works out. All right guys, quick update. I've gone ahead and taken care of all of the boards that go along the wall here. So all of the, you know, crazy cuts around the wheel well and the, whatever this is. That went relatively smoothly. It did take a little bit. I did burn through one jigsaw blade already. <laughs> this stuff is pretty hard on your uh, jigsaw blades if that's what you're using to cut it. There's multiple ways to cut it though. So I know I haven't really talked about this, but the way that I'm ending off the back of the van, you can see that there's a bit of a curve here to the way that I have it ending. So what I'm doing is placing my boards roughly in a place, not popping them in. And then when they overhang like this, that gives me my cutoff. All I need to do is take a Sharpie up underneath the bottom. Now I know exactly where I need to cut it off to match this curvature. And then uh, when I cut these boards off, every other one, the excess that hangs off is actually the part that goes at the front. So I think this piece from here to here is probably about 21, 22 inches or so. And then the piece at the front, it, all the way at the front is 24 inches. So everything that I cut off here, I just cut off just a little bit more, squared off, then take it to the front and it matches up perfectly. So I'm not wasting any extra pieces here while I do this. Alright guys, we are about halfway done. It's starting to get a little dark outside. I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and call it a day. 
but we made quite a bit of progress today. So Yeah, can we give a big shout out to Mike? I was working most of this day while he was working out here, and I'm I'm thoroughly impressed. Everything in the build seems to take tw twice as long as we think it is. Yeah. So maybe it's just me. I'm no. <laughs> I'm thoroughly impressed with how fast we got all this in today. <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of cutting to do and a lot of fitting things in, and it takes a little get a little getting used to to like mm -hmm. use the tap block and like tap the pieces in just right, but. Once I got it down, it was, it's not that difficult, but like the first five or six pieces I was in here cursing, like, what, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I'm sitting in the house and I can just hear you pounding the mallet <laughs> into the floor. I think we made some good progress, so we'll go ahead and pick you guys up in the morning and uh, hopefully knock the rest of this out tomorrow. The girl can dream. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's the next day. I'm back, working on the van, and hopefully finishing up the floor today. I did get a bit of a late start today. It was raining this morning. And uh, today is my mom's birthday. And for those of you who don't know, I lost my mom six weeks ago. So it was a little tough getting out of bed this morning, not gonna lie. Um, but I'm here, ready to work, ready to knock some stuff out. So I've got my first piece here marked, ready to cut for the back of the van. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and then use the uh, excess as the next board, uh, the next plank for the front of the van. Yesterday, before I left, I kind of talked about how difficult it was to install the floor before I figured out exactly how to do it. Um, basically, I wasn't overly familiar with how to use a tapping block and uh, the most effective way to do that. Now, I'm still not 100% sure that this is the absolute right way to do this, but this is the way that I've had success doing this. Basically, what I do is lock in my next piece into the, you know where I'm trying to put it, but I leave a little space for the lip here. So I try to leave a little space for this lip um, So it's not locked in on the end, but it'd be locked into this next one here And then I'll take my tapping block to the end and just tap it underneath So then that lip goes underneath over here and uh, Is nice and flush Before I figured out how actually subtle and easy it really is I was kind of trying to pick up on the board next to it or the board behind it and trying to interlock them together. And I was having, <laughs> I would have a board two feet away come off or come unhooked or whatever. And it was just super frustrating. But once I figured out that you can just pop it in and then just tap it back a little bit, uh, it made it a lot easier. Definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but super easy once you get the hang of it. Something else that I experienced yesterday was while trying to tap my boards backwards or trying to tap the boards back to interlock them like I did, um, I actually tapped the entire row next to it. So I'm pretty sure I was trying to tap this one in place right here under the next one all the way over here, but it was interlocked so tightly into the, the these next boards that I actually knocked this entire column from the back all the way to the front forward like a, I don't know a quarter to a half inch and uh, <laughs> I had to go to the front of the van and use this tool to tap it back outwards that's called a wide this is called a wide angle pull bar and it all came as part of this kit that I got from Lowe's All right guys, so I'm getting ready to do my first tough cut on the passenger side of the van. I'm starting at the front, right around the step in. And uh, what I'm gonna do is measure this dead space here and create a little outline of where I need to do my cuts. And then as soon as I do that, this piece, once I cut this out right here, this piece should be able to pop in. And then I can get up underneath here with a marker 
an outline everywhere where I need to cut on the bottom, which will make it just really seamless and a nice, perfect cut. So as long as I get this corner right, which I should, we should be good. I don't have extra planks. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I bought just enough square footage to do the entire van without room for error. So no messing up. <laughs> okay, looks like that worked pretty well. I got around this pillar here, no problem. I left a little bit of room around on the edges so there's no rubbing later on. And uh, now I get to go around on the, on the bottom with my Sharpie and measure out my cut. Kind of hard to see. I've seen some people use some paint pens or chalk pens to draw on these to make it easier to see your lines. I think that's definitely a good idea. I just didn't feel like running out and buying one of those, so make and do. Okay, we got this piece done. I think it looks pretty good. I think I did a good job of matching the step in and even notching this corner out. I know this corner is a little funny. Uh, the way that this comes out like this. I just like the idea of everything, the subfloor and everything, the, the floor having this extra pillar to keep it from sliding around. I know that that probably won't ever be an issue, but I don't know, it just feels a little more secure to me. Now we get to go ahead and continue down this way. I've already got this piece kind of faked into place here. And I'm just gonna notch out over here where my cut's gonna start around the wheel well and measure out up here and then try my best to meet this curvature here. I did a pretty good job on this side over here, just eyeballing this, so I'm gonna do the same and uh, wish me luck. Okay, so I went ahead and finished up that row that I was working on. As you can see behind me, it's done from the back all the way up to the front. I think it looks pretty nice. So with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day been about eight hours since I've eaten anything and I'm getting hungry. So I'll uh, pick you guys up again in the morning. We'll knock this last little bit out. Shouldn't take too long. Hi everyone. It is Wednesday and it is the last day of our floor. I, uh, I went home last night. I ate dinner. I feel, <laughs> I feel much better. So we're ready to knock out the rest of this and uh, hopefully it doesn't take very long. I mean, I, I, I've only got a few pieces to cut, but they are all custom, all very small pieces. So Wish me luck. I laughed so hard at that clip. <laughs> I haven't eaten like like your boss didn't let you take a break or something. <laughs> I have a tough boss, guys. <laughs> I wasn't even here. <laughs> I just forget to eat sometimes. Yeah. All right. So I think I mentioned before that cutting the LVP planks was eating through jigsaw blades pretty quickly. On the driver's side where I had to cut around on the wheel wells and all that stuff, this is what it did to my blade. And then on the passenger side with the back, kind of like all the other cuts I've been doing, I switched to a bigger blade, one that had already kind of worn on me a little bit from doing uh, the floors and stuff, but it has definitely done damage to this blade as well. So something to keep in mind, if you are using a jigsaw to cut your uh, LVP, it will eat up your, your blades pretty quick. So have a few extra on hand. All right, guys, I just put the last plank in the van. Let's take a look at it. Oh my gosh, Leah. Do you like it? Wow. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep it. <laughs> no, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think I'm just gonna put some caulk around all the edges. There's little gaps that'll have a nice seal around all the edges just in case water gets up under there or something. High five. <laughs> Good job. Hi everyone, it's the next day. As you saw yesterday, Mike finished up the floor and today we have our painting clothes on. We're gonna paint our walls. Yep, so uh, we've got some primer to put down first and then we're gonna put a couple coats of latex based paint and uh, that should give it a nice smooth finish. But before we start all that, got a lot of prep to do. <laughs> wow, 
While you guys are hearing our royalty-free soundtrack for this part, here's what we're listening to. We have Coachella coming up in a few weeks. We're trying to get ready. <laughs> All right, we're all taped up. We got our bucket of primer down there. I am on little brush duty. Mike is on big roller duty. We're gonna prime the walls and go get some lunch, hopefully. We are fully primed. You're supposed to wait about two hours before we can add another coat. Uh, so then we'll start with white paint. Just a disclaimer, this is not a how to paint video. This is just a look we painted video because um, my technique could probably use some work. But yeah, we got the first layer done. All right, it's been a couple hours. The uh, primer coat dried. We had our late lunch and 5.30, we're gonna try to finish this in an hour so we can go home for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be good. Yeah. I just wanted to say, the Raiders just got Devontae Adams. <laughs> and I am so hyped right now. That is all. <laughs> Support Mike in the comments if you're also hyped. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Seahawks just lost our quarterback, so I'm not sharing his excitement. <laughs> One more coat. What's up guys, I'm back, it's a new day, and I'm ready to get started on our last coat of paint. What's up guys, we left the paint prep up over the weekend, so all the tape, all the plastic, all that stuff is still up. The paint's completely dry, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and take everything down and see what it looks like. What's up guys, it's been about a day. I've just been working on some finishing touches for the floor and uh, cleaning up all the mess left over from the paint, uh, all the painting that we did and all that stuff. But here we are. So one of the things I've been working on is getting the transitions for the uh, floor steps in the front to the cab and also on the side step out the side door. And uh, I've got those pretty well done with some one and a quarter inch L-shaped stair edge nosing. I think it came out pretty good. And I'm most proud of this little corner right here. I cannot tell you how difficult it was to make this little bracket go around this corner like this. Front looks the same. The only thing that's gonna be a little different is right here where the cabinetry is gonna go. I'm probably gonna do some kind of like molding that's gonna cover up the bottom here. I'd rather not use something like this where the cabinet's gonna sit on top of it. And then back here in the back, I was having an issue where when we were getting in and out of the van to paint and all that stuff, we took the plastic up, some of the boards were shifting back or forward with the bracket in the front, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. But I wanted to make sure that these wouldn't slide back uh, until I can get something over the back of this. So I went ahead and used the same floor finishing nails and put one through each each plank here so that the boards can't shift either direction now. And then because I want to cover up all of this right here, probably about two inches, I'm actually going to order a vinyl L-shaped stair edge nosing that comes in a big roll that I'll be able to like fit over the whole thing and it'll be flexible so I can just glue it down over the top of this and it shouldn't go anywhere, it should be fine. And then the last finishing thing that I've been working on is just putting a nice bead of caulk around all of the edges of the floor. I figure caulk would be flexible so that the floor can expand and contract when it needs to. 
but also will be nice and watertight. Just in the event that something does happen, there's a major leak or something like that from, a, from our water tank or whatever, all that water should stay above our waterproof floor and not get into the uh, subfloor. All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Really happy with the progress that we've made. The van is starting to come together. It actually feels like an unfurnished studio apartment, which is just <laughs> incredible. So uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week. Bye guys.